Hey guys, welcome back to World of Warships. It's Centurion Master and today we'll be taking a look at the Japanese Tier 7 destroyer, the Akatsuki. Um, destroyers, ordinarily not a ship I would like or prefer to play. I'm definitely a battleship player, as you may or may not know. But I have decided to sort of like hammer my way down the Japanese destroyer line to try and gain a better understanding of how destroyers are played to ultimately assist me in playing against them. Um, I've picked a Japanese line because I feel it probably better suits my skill sets from what I've what I've picked up on YouTube etc etc. Um, I'm probably not the sort of quick thinking captain where I'm going to get in to very close quarters and get out releasing torps in high danger situations. I'm more of a zonal player. Um, I like to herd and harass um, and use of the very range of my torpedoes to their best advantage. Um, and try and stay out of harm's way. Uh, ultimately, a coward. Pretty much. <laughs> um, but this is probably the first time since I've started playing Destroyers. Certainly down this line, and I have had the odd game in the past, where I've really started to enjoy the games I'm playing. I'm still not having massive games. Um, I'm really not getting big numbers. But I do find more and more that I'm contributing to the team. Uh, I'm getting more wins and losses as a result. And game by game, I'm starting to pick up some of the skills required to be a successful destroyer player. Um, so actually, at the moment, I'm, I'm really starting to enjoy it. And I think a lot of it is down to the Akatsuki, uh, the type of ship it is. And I think it really suits my style of play. And with many destroyers, I think that's going to be the case. You've got your predominantly torpedo boats. You've got your gunboats. You've got your kind of hybrids in the middle. Um, and I think personally, from my point of view, I'm definitely going to be a torpedo boat sort of player um, as I continue to develop my skills in the destroy lines uh, in future games. So let's have a quick look at the stats. Survivability, 23. We've got hit points of 13,100. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what it is. It's probably middle of a road for a destroyer. There are a couple with certainly German destroyers, I believe, with much higher uh, hit points. And there's a couple, obviously, a little bit lower, but ultimately... As a destroyer, as you can see by the armour, you're not really there to take a battering. You're there to try and issue a battering out uh, from stealthy positions. And then uh, obviously get back to do whatever spotting you can for the bigger, uh, more powerful ships to do their, do their work and do their damage. Artillery, we score 25. Main batteries, reload time of 7.9 seconds, um, which isn't too bad. They're pretty decent guns all in all. 180 degree turn time of 22.7 seconds. Now that is with a couple of perks on and a couple of modules and consumables on, on the ship. I think normally you'd be at a stock level of 30 seconds, which is kind of agonizing. Um, but obviously if you get those skills on your captain and uh, apply those additional consumables, you can get that down. And I think I've got it down to pretty much as low as I can get it now at 22.7 seconds, which, which isn't all that bad. Maximum HE shell damage, 1800, it's pretty decent. You, you will set a lot of fires in this ship, probably one in five, one in six salvos is gonna give you a fire in return. And a chance of fire on target is 7%. So yeah, as a destroyer, you're predominantly probably gonna be using HE to try and harass and set fire to slightly bigger ships. But because of the nature of the armor on most destroyers, being so thin, um, you're probably only gonna overpen if you use AP anyway, unless you're particularly close range. Um, maybe against a, a not so well armoured cruiser for example you, you might get a decent return but you're probably going to stick with HE for most of a battle if you decide to use your guns AP shell damage of 2200 again marginally a, a little bit better but probably not something you're going to use a massive amount of time and a firing range of 10.4 kilometres again it's not the greatest um, but it's decent if you can get yourself into smoke or into a reasonable amount of cover you know, you can get some decent rounds down on your targets and rack up some half-decent damage with these guns. Although predominantly it's going to be the torpedoes that you're really looking to, to utilise to their advantage to maximise your damage and really deter the enemy. AP and HE shell velocity both at 915 metres a second. It's not the fastest, not the slowest, but pretty decent and you'll find out when you play it. But the guns all in all, they're not a bad set of guns. They can be improved obviously with consumables etc etc. However I've kind of maxed my torpedoes out on this boat as I think that's probably the best way the Akatsuki can be used. And we go on to the torpedoes then. 
overall score of 34 and kind of ease of a little gems of the Akatsuki. I think the torpedoes are really good on this boat. Certainly kind of like a pound for pound scoring point of view, the best along the line so far. We've got a reload time of 68.4 seconds. Again, I've got some skills on a captain's consumables on the ship to bring that time down. But even at your stock time, I think that is the quickest reload time on any sort of torpedo tube on the destroyers across the game. 180 degree turn time of 7.2 seconds isn't bad at all. Uh, maximum damage of just over 17,000 is pretty hefty. Um, and if you get torpedoes on target significantly enough, um, you do rack up some pretty decent damage per per salvo in the, in the torpedoes. Torpedo range of 10 kilometers is, is nice and a detectability range of 1.6K is okay. It gives the right targets um, minimal time to really make their maneuvers. You have got to think about where you're putting your torpedoes, obviously. Um, kind of speaks for itself, really, for any destroyer captain will be saying, of course you do, but think about where your ships may be, where they may be going, rather just the predicted path that the um, little indicator might tell you, and ultimately that way you'll maximise your, your damage from your torpedoes. And torpedo speed of 62 knots, um, it's, it's, it's pretty good. Uh, it's pretty, certainly above average. So all in all, a decent set of torpedoes on this ship. Um, probably 70% torpedo boat, 30% gunboat. Um, that's the sort of breakdown I would give you, Katsuki. AA defence kind of has an array of anti-aircraft, to be quite honest, and you, you can improve it a little bit, again, with captain skills and a couple of consumables, etc., etc. But I think all in all, it's not really something you're going to be relying on, and certainly you shouldn't be going looking for planes. You're probably going to shoot down the odd spotter um, as and when you need to, but all in all, it's it's not... I mean, it is what it is. It's it's a torpedo boat. You don't go out there with any real need. Um, it's all about stealth, so we're not looking for planes to, to shred them down. This isn't a minor tour by any stretch of imagination. Maneuverability, overall score 90. Maximum speed of 38 knots is pretty decent. I think only maybe the Minsk is better at 42 knots from memory. Uh, turning circle radius, 640 metres is kind of a little bit on the big side. Um, you, you'll feel that when you're playing it, kind of feels like it takes a pretty long time to, to make that turn. Certainly not as manoeuvrable as some of the other destroyers, but again, it's not sluggish. I just think for, for a destroyer, you kind of expect a bit more, so it's kind of middle of a road in that regard. Rudder shift time, 2.6 seconds. Again, I've got everything on my captain and consumer balls to get that time down. Um, because of a turning circle radius, I really need to try and make those turns as quick as I can. Uh, but 38 knots, and you know, in a 2.6 rudder shift time. All in all, it's a pretty maneuverable, nimble and speedy ship. Can get you in and out of trouble uh, pretty quickly, especially when you're using your speed boost. Maybe get in, drop your torps, get a couple of shots off, and then bug out of there pretty quickly using those functions. It, it does get you out of trouble uh, and can get you around the map pretty adeptly. Concealment, overall score of 92. Again, with perks, this is a fully upgraded Akatsuki. Detectability range by C, 6.4 kilometers, which is okay. It's certainly not the best, and I think it's 7.2 when it's at stock can be a little bit of a problem. Um, I certainly found it a problem when I started playing the Akatsuki. Um, just trying to get used to that sort of stealth over brute force mentality. Uh, coming from sort of like 90% of my games being battleships, it wasn't really about stealth as such. It was about getting into engagements, uh, supporting where I can, and using the ruggedness and robustness of the ships to sort of like remain intact but here it's all about stealth and it did take me a little bit of time to sort of like get that balance but now I've got it down to 6.4k it certainly helped me a lot 3.4k by air again you want to try and avoid those planes uh, wherever possible because they, they can give you away and have done so on many occasions to me as I found to my cost uh, after firing main guns in smoke 2.7k so you can drop yourself into a little smoke screen and rack up some decent damage if you think about where you're going to deploy your smoke in advance. Um, and obviously pick the right targets. You need very good map awareness. But you can get some decent damage. You can start fires and harass enemies. Um, and generally it's not it's not a bad score for concealment as destroyers go. 
you do get a little bit better, but all in all, I think generally as a, as a destroyer, it's certainly not a bad one. Um, it's, it's very quick, certainly in a straight line. Um, good smoke. Torpedoes are fantastic. Guns can can work well for you if you're or decide to try and go out with the intention of, of obviously using them. Think about your location, think about your targets, think about mutual support you may have on the map. Um, again, survivability, sometimes it's worthwhile against certain targets. For example, if they are firing armor piercing at you, go broadside, try and risk those overpens, um, and rather take the full sort of penetration damage bow on. Uh, but it's not a bad little ship. It's certainly a ship that I'm, I'm really enjoying playing. I've now uploaded the... Uploaded? I've now... Gordon Bennett. I've now got to the uh, the Kagero, but at the minute I haven't um, I haven't researched and purchased as I'm enjoying this too much. To uh, And I'm still going to kind of increase my skills a little bit on the Akatsuki before moving to sort of the responsibility of a, a destroyer of that tier. We can have a quick look now at the ammunition and consumables, etc. The upgrades I've got... Main armaments modification one, um, you know, bit extra torpedo tubes um, protection, uh, survivability etc. And obviously the repair time, uh, main battery survivability etc. etc. But again, it's horses for courses. What you really want to, what you really want to apply to your ships. I've got propulsion modification. Um, obviously twenty percent to the risk of the engine becoming incapacitated, and twenty percent to the engine repair time. More often than not. You do become incapacitated by engine uh, when using destroyer and you kind of need every bit of protection you can to ensure that you can stay maneuverable whilst whilst out on the battlefield. Main battery modification two. I've picked this one just simply for the traverse speed of the guns. I don't predominantly go out to use them, but it has been helpful, giving me that little bit more speed to get them in posi into position. But you certainly want to be thinking about moving the guns in advance as you're making your way around the map. Um, considering where your targets might be or where they might pop up and try and sort of lock them on a bearing beforehand to give you that extra bit of advantage um, if you do need to get rounds down on target. Steering gears modification 2, again, rudder shift time, absolutely vital. Your turning circle radius is quite, is quite big, so as soon as you can start turning, the quicker you can make those adjustments, so I've definitely got that one on. We move over to the captain. We can have a look at what sort of Skills I've got on the captain, obviously a 10 point captain at this point. Under endurance, priority target. Just lets you know how many number of opponents that are currently aiming at you. I think that's really important. If there's just a couple or maybe one aim at you, you can take a bit more of a risk. If it's three, four, five, etc., then you certainly want to be thinking about relocating. Last stand, an absolute must along this line. It's got to be the first one you get. Uh, when the engine or steering gears are incapacitated, they continue to operate but with a slight penalty. That's absolutely critical. Being able to manoeuvre and move while the engine or steering gears are incapacitated is absolutely vital and will save your save your bacon on more than one occasion. Attack. So torpedo armament expertise. Minus 10% to the reload time of torpedo tubes. And obviously the servicing time for torpedo bombers, not relevant in this scenario. But that little bit extra time to reload on torps is absolutely crucial if you're going to be predominantly a, a torpedo boat. And concealment expert, so obviously minus 10% to the detectability of this particular ship is absolutely critical and goes from 7.2 down to I believe it was 6.4, um, which is absolutely vital. Every little bit of detection um, or lack, lack of detection um, is absolutely critical to playing a stealth game. And I think ultimately as a, a torpedo boat, that's what you're going to have to be. Maybe as a gunboat, you can provide a bit more supporting role and take a bit, a few more risks. Um, but I think, especially with this ship, the Akatsuki, 70% of the time, use your torpedoes, use your guns more of a self-defense, or if you're absolutely certain there's no risk of return fire, then obviously by all means, fire away and do what damage you can. But predominantly it's about pushing enemies around, moving them from flank to flank, controlling sections and zones by just walling torpedoes wherever you can, um, and obviously spotting and capping as, as always, uh, a first sort of objective for any destroyer and its captain. So that's the Akatsuki. Um, we've got some gameplay I'm going to show you now. Obviously, again, I just want to state, certainly not the best player and still developing on the on destroyer gameplay. But for anybody who's interested or maybe wanting to play, definitely go down a Japanese line. They are very good destroyers. Uh, predominantly probably torpedo sort of 
favoured, if um, that's the right way of putting it. Um, if you want more sort of like gun action, I suggest you maybe go down the American line. But um, a very good ship, a brilliant all-rounder, fantastic torpedoes. Um, and yeah, let's have a, a quick look at some gameplay. And I'll try to show you some of those skills and how they come into effect on the battle. Right, here's some gameplay. So here we are, the game starts, one of three destroyers on our side, obviously two on the enemy team, so we have the advantage in that respect, thoughts at this point obviously and thoughts of most DD captains is to look at opportunities to get into the cap <coughs> and try and get an early cap and do some spotting for the friendlies in the area to get their teeth into. At this point I've decided I'm going to head over towards sea. Again, as I've stated before, not a perfect DD player by any stretch of imagination. So, just wanted to get across and look for an opportunity to maybe just get into the cap somewhere safe. Maybe get some torps off into a channel or down a pass where possibly some enemy ships may be advancing down. And hopefully, we can see or see quite early to give us an advantage. Already up to 38.1 knots. You see it's a pretty nimble ship, pretty quick in a straight line. And it does, uh, it does have its benefits having that decent top speed. So torps are now ready, very fast fast load on the, on the torpedoes on this ship. And as we come round and crest this small little island, we can be very careful and aware for any early spots because it is a sort of kind of dangerous position to be going into when you first enter a cap. I certainly expect most of the time an enemy DD to have a similar sort of mindset. And as I've said, the, the guns on the Akatsuki aren't, they're not terrible, but they're certainly not brilliant. So there we are, we get some torpedoes off and we try and make our way into the cap. No activity on this side as of yet, so we just move in. As you can see, it's just staying on the inside of that cap, not going to overcommit too much at this point. The Ibuki behind me has this little spot of playing in the air. <coughs> so it won't be long, and there we have our first target, a Mahan. Good guns on a Mahan, I don't want to be getting into a trade off too early with a, a destroyer of that, that nature. So we drop our smoke, <coughs> excuse me, and just look to sit inside the protection of that smoke and look for opportunities to possibly get our torpedoes off. At this point, we've got a St. Louis and a Prince Eugen in the distance, as well as a Neptune. There's every chance at this point I was thinking about possibly being detected by radar and ultimately that's what happens. So as you can see the grey line is your predictive line of the target ship. Didn't really have much scope to get the torpedoes off on that line so just went for a couple of spreads and there we have it. We have been detected at this point. Two people already, now four people aiming at us. So we can't faff round, we've got to get out of here. As I was saying, just getting some torpedoes off into a, an area where maybe a ship may decide to change direction and move into. But ultimately on this occasion, it won't pay off. But there's our first torpedo hit. Giving us a nice little bit of damage there as we sort of pull out of that location using the smoke as cover. And put the distance between us again and the enemy ships regain our detection or our stealth always key in a destroyer regardless of whatever destroyer you're playing whether it's more of a gunboat or torpedo boat it's it's all about stealth really you don't have the armor to be able to take a sustained beating so use the cover you have on the map that you're on whether that be islands or just mutual support, generally a lot of the time can also give you some assistance, but 
staying undetected should always be your primary focus. And we're taking um, a lot of fire here. Engine, engine, engine damage there, but with our, um, our last stand we're able to keep moving. But I've got to... Got to get that repair on and go to give me that extra little bit. And luckily for us, there's a smoke screen. It's been very appropriately laid. As you can see, there's a lot of drag in your cat's when you're trying to turn at speed. Overturning or the rudder shift is, is a pretty decent time. It, you have got to afford yourself a little bit of room to do that full circle. Thoughts at this point, obviously dodge that torpedo, we just get back into an area where I can get torps off again. Smoke screen's always a key key target for destroyer to try and just plow the road with, with torpedoes and just hope that you get lucky. And that 1.6k detection range of the torpedoes I've launched. It's not brilliant, but it's certainly not, not horrendous, so you have got to get a move on when you detect those torpedoes. At this point, just trying to constantly stay out of range and being permanently aware of that detection range. Something I'm still trying to get used to. 6.4k at this point with the Additional perks I've got assigned to this ship and captain. Oh, and we got lucky there with two torpedo hits. As I was saying, often just firing torpedoes blind into smoke. You know there's a ship in there potentially somewhere, maybe two. Engine and on this occasion we've got we've got lucky and come back with quite a decent bit of damage. Just over 41,000 damage now. As we call for assistance on the St. Louis. Minimal health. Really need to try and get rid of that ship quickly. There we have it again. Decent reload allows us to get some more torpedoes and walk water pretty sharply. And if we can get a shot off here, we will do. Using the island as cover, avoid just being detected. We get a couple of hits, but we don't get the kill. So at this point, two caps to one down. Slightly behind on cap points but one ship advantage, so as close as you can get to being a pretty even game. But I'd already made a decision at this point I was going to stay on this side, support whatever ships I can, spot what I can when I can, and just constantly try and blanket those torpedoes out. There are opportunities in this game to probably be a little bit more aggressive, um, certainly with, a, with the guns and utilising that HE. I probably could have let off a couple of smoke screens at various points during this game. Just sat in the corner of this island and just raked away, but still trying to develop a better understanding of the destroyer mechanics and how to really utilise torpedoes. As I've said, I'm no expert on this. But this cap in particular is a difficult one to have a clear approach to really maximise those torpedoes with that little formation in the middle of a cap. Quite often blocking your way. So 43 and a half thousand damage. We've taken a pretty pretty decent pummeling throughout this game. Down to a third of our health. Just under a third. We get more torpedoes away. And we just keep pumping out these rounds. And as you can see the guns aren't too bad. Dispersion's good. I think it's 98 metres at maximum range. So it does allow us to rain down fire on this Izumo quite consistently. But as you expect on a ship of that nature, minimal, minimal damage, hoping at best for a fire. Whilst also watching these torpedoes, but I think he's going to outrun them at this point. Not a lot of room to manoeuvre in this area of the map for getting torps off effectively. Charnos is being brave there. Man mode and getting to a centre, but he's about to pay the cost. Oh, 
And can we get shots on this Nelson? He's well positioned over there. Again, the only one left in the cap now. I've got to stay here. I've got to try and contest it as often and as much as I can. You know, at this point, I still feel reasonably safe. Just been detected there, so move away to try and put a little bit of distance between myself and, and that Nelson. Again, get more torpedoes away. Now we can utilise the smoke. It's been laid down for us here. It's definitely a different art in a destroyer. If you haven't played it before or you're looking to play it for the first time, it requires just as much awareness as playing any of a ship, but probably quicker decision making, I would say. You can afford to make a couple of mistakes in a battleship when approaching the centre of the map. Or if it's a mistake in a destroyer, it can be a lot more costly. And for me, it's, it's constantly being aware of your detection range and where you sit in relation to being detected. I think it's a bit like playing a medium tank a world of tanks. You've just got to be so much more alert and what's going on around you. But at this point, I've got a good 11k distance between me and Yazumu. So I'm just looking at opportunities to get in and get some torps off at this Nelson. I'm confident I can breach that detection range slightly and utilise the speed of the Akatsuki to get away. But again, it's just so difficult here to really find a decent lane to get some torpedoes off and as a result, I'm going to run myself into trouble. It's by the fortune of the gods, I feel like Nelson moves out of detection range before I can get taken out. But it's a few seconds before I'm reversed and on the way again. A testament to the speed of your cat ski. 45,000 damage at this point. 52 target hits, so probably a slightly bigger game with the guns I normally would play. But I feel in this sort of section, on this sort of map, with these formations dotted around, it's very difficult to find a lot of opportunities for torpedoes if the enemy have any sort of positional awareness and common sense. So I've had to be forced to use my guns more often than I probably would like. As I've said before, the Akatsuki I think is definitely a 70%, 60% torpedo boat. And that's definitely where its strength lies. However, if you are interested more in kind of racking up damage, being more of a, a close supporting destroyer, certainly look at the American line, the Mahan, etc, etc, from that point on. It's fantastic guns. And the Nelson is finally taken out. So we've still got two battleships on this side that require my attention. And let's see if we can do anything here to the enemy Leon. Being detected again, so we're going to pull away, recreate that distance. Let's just hope these torpedoes can do something. Commanding position now. All three caps in our possession. We've only three enemy ships left. This game should be pretty safe. Not even I can screw this up at this point. <laughs> Engine boost deactivated. A lot of these torpedoes are going to miss, but I think. The third and final salvo may just tag this French battleship. And there we have one torpedo strike. And we've got flooding on the way. Pretty sure he's immediately used his repair kit. And it shouldn't be long before this battleship is taken out. So we're in a very commanding position at this point. 61,000 damage. Not really bad for me, I kind of average 50 I, I would guess, some some games slightly more but it's all situational, at this point still not completely dialed into how to play a destroyer, but more and more I'm starting to feel more comfortable 
and sort of what's required. And kind of what I'm learning is it's just constantly being aware of your distance from target, making sure of your detection, or even a little spot of playing there, constantly being aware of the ranges that you need to be to remain at full stealth. Because most of your damage is going to come from you when you're in stealth positions. There's any battleship or enemy ship worth its weight in. Anything will be aware and be making a relative maneuvers. And there we have it. Games won. Not a bad little game. Not action packed, but we contributed a little bit. 72,500 damage, 61 target hits, 5 torpedo hits, and just under 3,000 experience. So, kind of middle of the road game. But for me, not bad. Still learning. And there we have it. Third on the board. So, all in all, not too bad a game. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Uh, please like and subscribe if you do, and that's a massive help for me. And I'll, uh, I'll catch you next time. Take care.